Santa Clara. And a couple of women worth watching. Elizabeth Beisel will be in lane number seven. She hasn't had the best season to this point, but she was the top qualifier for the 400 freestyle event at this Santa Clara Grand Prix. And in lane number five, Julia Smith from nearby Palo Alto, California, swimming for the Stanford Swim Club. And you can't overestimate just how important it can be to be Radio swimming Radio close to home, where you train, where you live, that sense of familiarity. It can translate into your performance in the pool. Uh, and Natalie mentioned that when we were talking to her on camera. She said, you know, being so close to home, to be able to drive home tonight, spend the night in her own bed, I think that helps a lot, Steve, you're right. Especially in a situation where you're swimming a lot of different events, you, you'll see Julia Smith, a lot of events, both Smith, events, both Smith and, as you mentioned, Beisel, so incredibly versatile, they can Lane swim anything. I mean, think about it. Beisel's Lane going from the 200 breast in a couple of events to the Lane 400 five, free. You can't get much different than those two. Now here, Ashley Wanlin was seven, the Julia leader at the turnaround. She's in lane number six. And here's lane number three. Trying to make it a close one, but fading just a bit here down the stretch as we come into just about the final 10 meters of the race. Yeah, right here at the halfway point, you'll see Wanlin, and she makes that turn in 11.5. That's pretty solid going out. Much faster than she was in the prelims. Very much in control. It's still early. Anything can happen, especially this third 50. Smith will be much better here this second 100. Biza will be better. But Wanlin doing a really nice job. Schmidt, once again, the top qualifier in this B final. Remember, lane five is your top qualifier. For those of us that are so familiar with swimming, usually you see the top eight, meaning lane four is the top qualifier. Here it's five. There's Schmidt kind of falling off the pace. I'm a little surprised that she doesn't put a little bit more pressure on that 50. Wanlin's still really much in control. 21 years old from Wisconsin. Now Wanlin. Still has established the lead and has taken control of this race in the final 50 meters now, final length of the pool in an event where it's so much of a measured effort in all 200 meters. Wallen had a great NCAA championships for the University of Wisconsin. A native of Long Grove, Illinois, but a very proud Badger. And this is a very decisive victory for Ashley Wadlin, coming home in 228-17. Wow. Elizabeth Bison in lane seven takes second. That's a pretty good time. That's, that's over four seconds faster than what she went in the prelims. I know, I know she's going to be, that, that, that win right there is going to be a little bittersweet for me. You can see it from underwater. She gets that nice reach, nice rigid body when she makes that extension. Good, strong kick behind her. I think it's going to be a little bittersweet for her because if she would have just gone close to that, she would have been in the final. That's the fastest time so far here at this meet by about a half a second. The top qualifier, Sony, Rebecca Sony, the Olympic gold medalist was 228.6 coming in. So she just did a little too little too late here. Now, Rowdy, it's about timing in more ways than one. It's about when you do it as well as the time you post. No question. You can do it in prelims, get yourself in the A final. It makes a world of difference. Still, for Ashley Wanlin, a very good performance in the B final to get the win.